It's the dictionary. 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 Well, hello, everybody. You're a word nerd because you're watching this show called The Dictionary, all about the words in the English language. I mean, it's really all the words in the whole entire universe that we are aware of here on planet Earth, but they just happen to be in English. I'm doing this in English. Uh, and, you know, there's other words in other languages that don't exist in English and vice ver vice versa. Uh, let's see. I am recording this on uh, November 3rd. It is 7.13 a.m. Let's do this. But first, I got to say some things. Uh, if you want to contact me, you can email me, dictionarypod at gmail.com. Um, if you have your own theme song that you want me to put into an episode, you can email it to me. Just email on that one. If you have a joke for any future word, um, you know, the very ends of the E's all the way through to the end of the alphabet, go ahead and email me the joke and I will, uh, I'll put it in an episode. I'll say it in an episode when, when I get there. Uh, what else? Social media at Dictionary Pod, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, X, Threads. I just put some pictures up of visual things from, from these. Uh, what else? Merchandise. There is a T public link in the show notes. I would love it if you bought some stuff. Uh, Patreon, $1 a month. That gets you early episodes, audio and video, and exclusives. This is all going, all this audio and video is all going to YouTube. So my YouTube is uh, uh, Speedjampar. Um, you can find it. There's a link, links, multiple links in the show notes. And uh, go check out, watch these on the YouTube. That's the best place to see it. And then you can see me doing things like... Uh, okay, what else? Uh, Patreon, we said that. Uh, merchandise, we said that. Uh, Joe, Jonah and Tom made my theme songs. They go back and forth every other episode. And so go check out their musical things. I think that's fine. Let's... No, Google Voice number 917-727-5757. It's in the show notes. Leave a message and I will put it in a future episode if you're okay with that. Okay, the first word in this episode is engaging. This word just... I don't ever want to leave this word. It's so engaging. E-N-G-A-G-I-N-G. -G -G. Three G's in the such a short word. Adjective from 1673. Tending to draw favorable attention or interest. The synonym is attractive. As in, an engaging smile. Ho oh, ho, that's my engaging smile. Sorry, this post-it fell over. What else about that word? Engagingly is an adverb. If you're doing something in a fun, attractive way, then it is being done engagingly going to attract you into watching this show every day, Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday. Come watch this show. You are getting sleepy. How, why, why are you getting sleepy? I don't know. Okay, I need to make a sound effect. Let's go. That's the sound effect for today. The next word is Engelman Spruce. Two words. Engelman is spelled capital E N G E L. M-A-N-N. -N. Noun from 1866. This is a large spruce of the Rocky Mountain region and British Columbia that yields a light-colored wood. So I guess if you're looking for a light-colored wood, maybe you want to find some of this Engelman spruce. The species name is Picea Engelmani. So it's just Engelman with an I. There's two I's at the end, actually. Engelmanii. This, this comes from a person. I think that's pretty obvious. It is from George Engelman, who was an American botanist and died in 1884. 1884. That was a long time ago. Uh, mm, interesting. So 1866 is when this, uh, this spruce was named after Engelman. And that was um, just about 20 years before he died. And so he, um, he, was, he was alive 
when this thing was named after him. This tree was named after him. So that's pretty cool. Good for you, George. <laughs> Next is engender. I, I'm, I am suspecting the definition of this word has changed uh, over the years. Engender, verb, from the 14th century, starting with transitive, one. The synonyms are beget and procreate. Uh, so that's all about creating new life, a new thing. Um, procreating is literally making a baby. Um, and then beget, you know, I think the Bible starts off with like, these people beget this person, this, these people beget that person. And it's all about, yeah, it's, it's, I don't remember the exact definition, but it's basically making a new, a new, a new person, a child, a new generation. So that's in one way to say in gender, I guess. Number two, to cause to exist or to develop. Uh, the synonym is produce. As in, policies that have engendered controversy. This is just all about making anything, really creating anything. Um, hmm. It's so interesting that we use the word gender in this that's about just creating something. We'll look at the etymology in a minute. Um, yeah, to just to cause to exist or to develop, just to make it create uh, produce. I am engendering this podcast because it's coming. To, to, I'm reading the, from the book and the, then my other thoughts are coming from my brain. Um, oh yeah. Engendered policies that have engendered controversy. That's a, that's a sticky situation. Here we have intransitive, which is to assume form. And the synonym is originate. So I guess it's like you're taking on a form, you're assuming a form, you're originating something. Sorry, I get I get so like yawny and weird when I record this. And I don't know if that's because it's still early in the day or if it's because because uh, I'm talking so much and my body's not used to that. So anyway, apologize. I, I apologize for the weird sort of like the uh, burpy yawny lung things that happen. But I don't want to cut a lot of stuff out. I'm just going to keep on chugging through it. So, the etymology, I mean, it's obviously from the word gender, but, okay, maybe it's not from the word gender, uh, because, because, um, it's from the Latin verb in generare, in generare, which is from the in prefix plus the verb generare do you see where this is going which means to generate to generate to create to start so that's really where this word comes from now that makes me wonder and i'm going to take off my jacket because it is warm now that makes me wonder if the word gender literally comes from the word to generate or is this one a special case this is this is getting complicated but the, okay there we go um fascinating let's put a pin in that for the g's we'll get there eventually uh, but yeah that's a that's an interesting thing to think about never really thought about the etymology of the word gender so in gender is not about gender it's about generating creating don't forget that <laughs> i didn't mean to do a uh transformer sound but that's sort of what it came out to be like okay the next word is in guild e-n-g-i-l-d transitive verb from the 15th century to make bright with or as if with light making bright with light we're making it bright with light all up in here at night do 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 uh so in guild there's no etymology um, but I've heard of things, you know, gilded things are, are bright and fabulous. Uh, so maybe there's something about that. G-I-L-D. I will, again, we'll have to wait until the G's to learn about gild and why that's related to light and brightness. And a light bright, you kids today, I don't know if you got to play with light brights. 
The next word is engine. E N G I N E. First form. A uh, noun from the 13th century. We got we got a number of definitions here for engine. Number one is obsolete. And we have a 1A and 1B, so those would both be obsolete. 1A, the synonym is ingenuity. I see how engine, ingenuity, they sort of sound alike at the first part there. Um, so I guess there was a, something happened there, but... Yeah, we don't, we don't use the word engine when we're talking about ingenuity. Uh, 1B, also obsolete. Evil contrivance. And the synonym is wile. W-I-L-E. Like, you're wily. You're evil. You are so evil, you would say it evil. Wild? No. Evil contrivance. That's engine. Yep, I just, I cannot come up with a connection with the word engine for that definition. 2A, something used to affect a purpose. And the synonyms are agent and instrument. As in, mournful and terrible engine of horror and of crime. Oh, that's from E.A. Poe, Edgar Allan Poe. And my wife and I just finished watching the uh the show the fall of the house of usher which is on netflix and uh it's good and i never read the book never saw the other movies that were made from the story uh but it was written by poe and there's a lot the flanagan gets in a lot of poe references into that into this uh eight yeah eight episode series it's real good it's real creepy it's good stuff um, so, back to the definition. Something used to affect a purpose, an agent, an instrument, a thing that is making another thing happen. The agent, uh, it's not a secret agent, it's just a thing that, that makes something happen. I like to use simple words, simple phrases to describe things for all of us. Um, so, mournful, now, a Poe quote, it's going to be kind of poetic. Um, mournful and terrible engine of horror and of crime. So this engine, this thing that got something started, it was mournful and terrible, I guess. I have, I don't know. Uh, I should look up to see where uh, where that that quote was from, and uh, I'll put it in the show notes because he's got a lot of stories and things. To be something that produces a particular and user usually desirable result, as in engines of economic growth. So yeah, similar idea to 2A, where it's it's a thing that's making something else happen, uh, but specifically, it produces a particular, uh, a desirable result, a specific result that you want to happen, like economic growth. 3A, a mechanical tool, as, got, got, got some subs here, 3A1, an instrument or machine of war. I don't know exactly how or why it's about war, because I don't know all about the engines in the world, um, but I guess one type of engine is used in war. A mechanical tool. Okay, well, 3A2 is obsolete, and this is a torture implement. What sort of implement were they using to torture people with uh, called an engine? I am going to have to put a link in the show notes for that one. If you are curious, um, my wife recently visited uh, Belgium, Bruges specifically, and there's a torture museum there. And um, coincidentally, a friend of ours went to, there's a torture museum in Chicago, and he went to this museum right around the same time. I had no idea there were so many torture museums around the world. Two. There's probably a lot more than two. Um, but yeah, now I'm really curious. What's, a, what's an engine torture device? Okay, 3B, the synonym is machinery. Just any sort of machinery is an engine. 3C, any of various mechanical appliances. And this is often used in combination, as in fire engine. So the fire engine, the thing that the fire people drive around in to put out the fires with the ladders and the hoses. 
Uh, it is a machine. Uh, where did it go? Various mechanical. It's just a mechanical device. Any mechanical device. You put a word in front of it. It's a, it's that thing, and then it's an engine. It's an engine about that thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I always thought fire engine just because it's a vehicle and there's an engine in it, but never really thought about, like, this is a weird use of the word engine. Okay, four. This is a biggie. A machine for converting any of various forms of energy into mechanical force and motion. Also, a mechanism or object that serves as an energy source. As in the example, black holes may be the engines for quasars. Now, they are not literally a machine, uh, a, a human-made or, or living being-made machine, um, but they are the thing, the object, that serves as an energy source. Because there's a whole lot of energy in a black hole. There's a whole lot of, lot of stuff in a black hole. So... Uh, Converting various forms of energy into mechanical force or motion. Yeah, so an engine, a car engine, it's gonna take it's gonna take the uh, the gasoline that's been ignited, and it's gonna take the battery, the electricity, and it's gonna make stuff go. Now, which which is it? Is it the? I don't. I never studied cars, so I don't know. Is it the electricity that makes the engine go, but then the gasoline ignition? makes it make it i don't know how it all works i don't know i should know at least the basics right uh okay number five a railroad locomotive is that you know that thing the truck thing that car in the front that's the engine it's gonna it's got to be strong because it's got to pull all those additional cars and sometimes i get stuck i get stuck at a industrial railroad track and it's just car after 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 car this is a hundred i've seen counted a hundred i think so many number six computer software that performs a fundamental function especially of a larger program um it's a it's a software it's computer software uh, yeah i mean i guess it's just yeah most softwares if you got to run a lot of processing stuff they would call it an engine yeah i guess i've heard engine in terms of computers before um i don't yeah i don't use it myself i don't say that engineless is an adjective it's got no engine nothing making stuff happen it's engineless this morning my brain feels engineless the etymology says this is from the Latin word ingenium, which means natural disposition or talent. What? That's odd. Okay. That is also from in plus ging, gignere, which means to beget uh, be, or beget maybe. And so, yeah, we saw that right at the beginning there. Um, no, we saw that in engender. That's interesting. So engine and engender are related that way. So, but it makes sense with all these definitions that we read about engine. It's it's largely about something that makes something else go, something else happen. Um, so that makes sense. There's more at the word kin, K-I-N. But I am still confused about this whole natural disposition or talent thing. So when you take the word that means to beget and put the in prefix on it, it becomes natural disposition or talent. Hmm. It's a very weird evolution there. Moving on. <laughs> the second form of engine is a transitive verb from 1868. To equip with engines. You are engining a thing. You have engined it. You're given you're given a thing some engines. You are equipping it with engines. You put an engine in a fire engine. It's it's a fire engine. I don't know. Let's move on to <laughs> the first form of the word engineer, noun from the 14th century. One, a member of a military group devoted to engineering work. I did not think 
that we would need to specify military. I mean, yes, there are engineers in the military, but there's engineers not in the military. Um, I don't know why we have to specify this one is part of the military, but I guess maybe, you know, the military, they do weird things, so maybe they needed it in there. Uh, number two is obsolete, and it is a crafty schemer. Uh, the synonym is plotter. So you're engineering a plot. You're creating a plot to do something, uh, a scheme, a crafty scheme. I love this definition, and I'm sad that we don't use this anyway. I mean, I guess I feel like you've you've probably said or heard they've engineered a plot, they've created it, but yeah, I guess we don't use it this way. We got to use it. If you're if you're scheming craftily, then you're an engineer. We need to bring this one back. 3A, a designer or builder of engines, very specifically about engines. Nobody is designing or engineering uh, black holes, even though they are a type of engine. But no, we're talking about the mechanical ones made by human hands. Uh, let's see. Number 3B, a person who is trained in or follows as a profession a branch of engineering. So it's worded kind of backwards, but it all makes sense. A person who is trained in a branch of engineering. That's basically it. Or they're following a profession of a branch of engineering. It's an engineer. It makes sense. 3C, a person who carries through an enterprise by skillful or artful contrivance. Now, is this kind of related to the crafty schemer? A person who carries through an enterprise by skillful or artful contrivance. Where else did we see contrivance? Ah, there, under engine, evil contrivance or while. That was obsolete. And so, yeah, there's this idea, this old idea, I guess, of an engineer uh, being, being sneaky, being evil and wily um, because they're engineering they're creating their future they're doing things now to make sure that they get what they want to move up in a corporation in a job or something like that um yeah they're engineering their future i mean we're all engineering our future but specifically you know there are these people who uh who are called engineers in that way they're doing they're doing that engineering hmm okay well, next is number four, a person who runs or supervises an engine or an apparatus. Uh, they're, they're running the engine, so they're the engineer. It makes sense. Makes sense. Any sort of apparatus. Um, there is some different new etymology. Um, it's from the Anglo-French engineer, which means to devise or construct. So it's Thinking of a, a thing, planning it out, creating it, constructing it. Um, I don't know why we didn't see any of that in the word engine. But, you know, you get the whole story when you watch this show. You get me to put it all together for you. The next word is the second form of engineer. Uh, this is a transitive verb from the, uh, the 1843. Uh, one, to lay out, construct, or manage as an engineer, as in engineer a bridge. I do sort of want to go back to the noun engineer because um, th the people who have the job called engineer, uh, not necessarily one who is running an engine or things like that, but there are so many different types of engineer jobs. There's like electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, maybe even biological engineering. Um, there's So it's it's a very vast uh, type of job. I mean, we did get a little bit of that in this one, uh, 3B, a person who is trained in or follows as a profession, a branch of engineering. It's a very broad, broad definition. Um, but I'm very impressed with engineers uh, because they they're very smart. I think in general, they're very smart and they are they are able to come up with these complicated systems like engineering a bridge. 
I was just in San Francisco for work, and we saw the Golden Gate Bridge, and we drove over another bridge. I guess it's the Bay Bridge. And we, I was with my coworkers in the car, and we were just like, how did they do this? What? This, they, would, they were built so many decades ago. They were so smart all those years ago to figure out how to do this, to build these massive structures. People did die. It was not the most safe working conditions. Uh, it's a lot easier to do build bridges like that now, these days. But the fact that they were able to build these all those decades ago is very impressive. And uh, that's just one example of, of uh, the engineer's work. Let's talk about more things that are being engineered. Uh, 2A. This is the verb. To contrive or plan out, usually with more or less subtle skill and craft, as in engineer a business deal. Yeah, it's all about creating it, thinking about it, planning it, plotting it, scheming it, contriving it. 2B. To guide the course of, mm, as in engineer a rally so yeah again it's the idea of looking ahead what's what do we want the end goal to be and let's start now let's do things to get us to that point that's all life is um let's see we got we got another one for the verb engineer yes number three to modify or produce by genetic engineering that's another thing that people can engineer, genetic engineering, as in corn engineered to resist crop pests. And this is obviously a whole very complicated political uh, topic. Um, there are pros and cons to foods that are genetically engineered, genetically modified. Um there are benefits. I see benefits to, you know, for instance, getting rice to grow in certain areas that because of maybe climate change, they have a harder time growing the normal rice, but they've got rice now that they can grow in these new conditions so people can keep on eating. Or like corn that resists pests so we can have more food for people. Um, eh, the animal situation, that's a whole other thing. But... Um, I would like it if we didn't have to be doing these things. I would like it if we didn't have climate change, which is a big reason why a lot of this is happening. Pests, obviously, we don't want the insects eating our food, but they got to eat too. Anyway, I think I think there is some level is fine. Some of it might be too much. I'm not an expert on genetically modified food at all. And then, of course, the corporations that are getting into this, that's that takes it to a whole other level of legal things and financial things and welfare of farmers who are independent and all that stuff. We're not going to get into that. Um, the synonym for the, syn the, the verb engineer is the word guide, guiding a path, basically. Okay. <laughs> the next word is engineering. Noun from 1720, one, the activities or function of an engineer. What does an engineer do? They do some engineering. 2A. The application of science and mathematics by which... Oh, this is it's a long one. Okay. Got to let, let out a little burp. Get ready for it. <clears throat> the application of science and mathematics by which the properties of matter and the sources of energy in nature are made useful to people. Did you hear the little the little air escape? <laughs> I heard it. I don't know if you heard it. Um, okay, so you're taking science and math, and you're putting it all together, and you're using sources of energy in nature. Uh, I, I'm I'm not reading this well, but it's it's the it's it's engineering. It's taking you're using science and math, and you're making stuff. It's useful for people. That's what it is. 2B, the design and manufacture of complex products, as in software engineering. Yes, software can be very complex. Hardware engineering, that's another one. You have to design it and create it. 3, calculated manipulation or direction as of behavior. 
Mm, engineering behavior, as in social engineering. There's another type of engineering. Calculated ma manipulation or direction. So you're, you are calculated in how you are manipulating the behavior. That's one example. Um, social engineering, yeah. Ooh, that's a fascinating topic. Uh, this whole thing, it says compared to genetic engineering... Um, I don't know why is that, I think that's for the whole thing, not just the last definition that we read. Um, how is that, I mean, wouldn't that just be a type of engineering, genetic engineering? Um, or is that, I don't, I don't know. But it, it, it guides us to the G's for genetic engineering, if you want to go learn about that. <laughs> Next is enginery. Enginery. It's the word engine with R-Y at the end. Noun from 1641. And it is instruments of war. The enginery. And of course, when we go back to the word engine, um, one of those one of those was about uh, me me mechanical things used in war. And they were called enginery. <laughs> Next is engird. E-N-G-I-R-D, transitive verb from 1566. This is archaic, and the synonyms are gird and encompass. So encompass, is, I think you're just it's surrounding a thing, engirding a thing. I am not familiar with this word at all. Engirdle, E-N-G-I-R-D-L-E. That's the last word. Transitive verb from 1596. Uh, so 30 years after ingird, they might be related. The synonym for this one is the number one definition for the word girdle. Ingirdle, girdle. And we just have to wait to get there. That's all we got to do. Um, it's time to pick a word of the episode. We had engaging, Engelman spruce, engender, engild, Engine, engine, engineer, engineer, engineering, enginery, engird, and engirdle. So many engine words. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, which one do I want to pick? I don't know. I want, I want to pick. I don't know. I'm, I'm tempted to just pick engender, uh, just because it's all about creating a thing. But I like that the etymology was different than what I was expecting. And it's not related to the word gender, um, which I'm sure a lot of people probably think. So, I mean, well, here's the thing. I mean, that word is probably being used these days uh, in different ways than what we have specified here, possibly. I feel like I've heard it used in other ways. Uh, maybe related to gender. I don't know. But that, that, see, that's where a thing, that's where uh, language evolves and people start using a word in a way that maybe they think makes sense, even though it's not technically true, and then it just becomes true. Uh, so that's, you know, maybe a hundred years from now, we're going to be using engender in a whole different way. Um, okay, so I, I don't know what song to sing about engender. Engender, engender. It's about begetting and procreating, not about gender. That's fine. That was a simple little song. Um, and I uh, would like to tell you about another movie that I watched. Um, let's see. I would love to dig more deep into these movies. As I have said, I want to do a whole thing where I watch the movie and I talk about it. I already did a video with my friend Jonah. We watched uh, Gaslight from 1944, uh, and I would love to do more of these. I just don't have the time just yet, but maybe someday I'll be doing them regularly by myself with a guest, putting up a, on the YouTube page. But in the meantime, this is all we got. Okay, the next movie I watched is Brightburn, um, and this is, I don't feel like it got great reviews, but I quite enjoyed it, and I've talked to some people, and they also enjoyed it. The premise, it's a, it's a horror movie. I mean, it's a straight-up rated R horror movie. Um, the idea is, basically, what if Superman 
became evil as a child still at like, I don't know, 10 years old, maybe 10, 10 or 11. Um, just because of the way he grew up and ch other children uh, being being kids, being nasty, and maybe he's kind of weird and different. And then he learns about these powers that he has because that's that was Superman, right? He came down from another planet and he had these powers. And, you know, compared to us, he had these powers. And But Superman became a good guy. But in this context, he did not. And let's what what could possibly happen when he is unhappy with the world? It's a fun movie. Okay, that's it. That's the end of this episode. Thank you very much for watching and listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Whoop!